question number 24. It reads, Jasmine decided to put $100 in a savings account each month. The account pays 3% annual interest compounded monthly. Question, how much money S would Jasmine have after one year? Okay, so we're looking at a compounded growth situation where contributions are being made. All right, so let's start out by writing down the formula for compound interest. This is not just our typical compound interest scenario. It's um, where the interest is compounded n times within the t within a year, but we have contributions being made. Okay, so each month, Jasmine puts in a hundred dollars. So let's take a look at the appropriate formula that uh, applies to this scenario. Okay, so let's call it compound interest with contributions. Okay. All right. So what we are looking at is what the final amount is after um, a period of t years. Okay. So the final amount as a function of t years is basically the compounded growth, compounded growth of the principal okay assuming you started with a specific amount of money plus the compounded growth compounded growth of uh, your contributions so your contributions are growing and your um, original principle that you started with is growing also. Okay. Now there are two ways that we can uh, express these two formats for the formula. They're exactly the same. Um, let's take a look at the first form which is a simplified form. Form 1. Form 1 is given by um, A of T. That's the amount. Final amount is equal to the compounded growth of the principal is basically p times 1 plus the rate over number of times compounded per year raised to the number of times compounded a year times t. So let's say you just put a particular amount of money in a savings account without making any contributions and it's com compounded the interest is compounded n times per year this formula will suffice. Okay but we have contributions being made so we have to compensate for that too so that is given by the payments PMT times 1 plus the rate over number of times compounded per year raised to the number of times compounded per year times T minus the payment okay that value is divided by the rate divided by the number of times compounded per year okay so this is one form for computing um, the amount that you have over t years. Uh, let's take a look at another form. It's the same thing but it's, it's not as simple as simplified as form 1. Okay, take a look at form 2. This is the one that we'll be using for this particular problem because upon substitution it arrives at a state that's consistent with the options provided. Okay, so the compounded growth of the principal component remains the same. We're just going to alter the second part slightly. Okay. Now, this can be ri also written as the payment every month minus the payment times 1 plus r over n to the nt. So you notice we switch the order of the difference in the numerator. Anytime you switch the order of a difference, you introduce. Ne a negative okay so what's gonna happen check out what happens in the denominator we have one and that minus to compensate for the reversal one plus r over n okay so these two formulas are exactly the same thing um, we're gonna be using form 2 um, to solve this problem okay all right but if you work it out completely you, you should get the same answer regardless of the form that you use in Jasmine's particular case, let's go ahead and specify what the variables are. So in Jasmine's case, 
The principal is how much she started with. How much does the Jasmine start with? How much did she put down? Her principal value P0, okay, was her interest rate. Her interest rate is the R value. Now you want to be careful here. The interest rate is 3% and it has to be expressed in decimal format which is 0 0.03. You accomplish this by dividing the percent value by 100 or moving the decimal point two places to the left. She's making contributions so what are her payments or contributions? That's given by PMT and in this particular case she contributes $100 every month. Now, how many times um, is her interest compounded? It's compounded, so number of years, number of times, sorry, number of times a year that her interest is added onto ac her account. This one is the N value in the formula, okay? It's compounded, let's see, what did it say in the problem? It's compounded monthly. Okay, so how many months are there in a year? There are 12 months in a year. So 12, 12 is what N is. Okay, and then uh, in this particular problem, we want to figure out how much she has after one year. So that tells us that the time, which is the T component, is simply one. So what we're looking for in this problem is what A of 1 is, amount after 1 year, okay? So let's go ahead and plug in all these values into the formula. So we have the principal, $0 times 1, plus R, 0 0.03 over N, 12, raised to the 12 times 1, that's NT. This is the uh, growth in the principal over the first year. Since she didn't put any money down, she didn't have any principal that she started with, so nothing grows. Okay, we're just focusing on the growth of her contributions. You see the zero that we're multiplying this by? We'll basically nullify this entire expression, okay? All that we left will be the right side, which is the growth of the contributions. So we're gonna be using form two as indicated earlier. So we have the payment, which is 100, minus the payment, times one plus the rate, 0 0.03 over 12 raised to the nt 12 times 1 okay and that will be divided by um, divided by 1 minus 1 plus the rate 0 0.03 over 12 okay so if you take a look at the options provided here the problem is not evaluated completely, it's like a partial solve. So what we're going to do is evaluate what this quantity in the parentheses is and then plug it into the formula and that should give us our final result. Okay, so the question is what is 1 plus the growth rate 0 0.03 divided by the number of times is compounded per year, which is 12, you get 1.0025, okay? So this problem becomes 0 plus 100 minus this uh, quantity in the parentheses is 1.0025 nt as 12 and then we divide that by 1 minus this is the same expression in the parentheses 1.0025 okay we don't want to go too far now or else we're going to miss our our option value for the correct answer 1.0025 raised to the 12th power divided by 1 minus 1.0025 okay we're gonna stop here because we want to make sure we have a match and as you can see the correct answer is option number two okay so that's the final amount of money that um, Jasmine is going to have if you want to find the exact numerical figure just simply plug it into your calculator and you will get uh, what the um, final answer is.
Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your studies of um, in the preparation for the Algebra 2 Common Core Regents exam, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments, just place it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to support you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to other cool tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgotserve.com under test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.